Hi, what up? It's TMF aka Triple A back at it again with something a little different. If you can't already know by the title of this video, I am going to be commenting and giving my two cents and thoughts on Produce 48 episode one and two. Uh, I wasn't going to do this, but I realized, you know, maybe it's nice to follow and like kind of give my two cents and my guesses on who's going to make the final cut right i'm definitely going to try to put timestamps on this video because it's pretty long and there's a lot i want to talk about but first and foremost if you don't know what produce 48 is or the produce genre itself it's pretty much korean idol companies sending their trainees right those who haven't already been debuted into this like survival competition where fans vote in their favorite members and these trainees are graded from F to A on their skill performances and throughout the week you know their grades can change depending on how well they perform and how well they improve <clears throat> that's from my knowledge uh, pr this produced season is the only one that I've been watching so far I haven't seen produce 101 or Produce 201, I think, or 102, or the second season of it. So how I got into Produce? Well, one variety show led to another variety show, led to other idols, led to, let's just say, me falling in love with IOI. And because I fell in love with IOI, you know, I got to know Produce 101, you know, watch some of their clips. And then as I was doing that, I came across Produce 48, and I was like, what is Produce 48? So, what is Produce 48 and how is it different from the other producers? Well, the other producers were just Korean only. And Produce 48, believe it or not, is now Korean and Japanese. Not just any Japanese, we're talking AKB 48, one of the biggest Japanese girl group, idol group in Japan. Like, I have over, I think, 600 active and inactive members. I think that's what I saw, but I, th but for active members, I think it's around maybe 150. I'm not too sure, but something around like those ridiculous numbers, right? Produce the 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 whole the Korean produce because I think there is a Chinese version, but the Korean produce, the editing style is, is so dramatic in the show, and I love it. I hate it, but I love it. All right, so let's move on. <sighs> Episode one. I don't have many notes on episode one because I, to be honest, only thought about doing this halfway through episode two. So forgive me if what I write you know, may be off or on and if I can't remember the name, so just forgive me. So episode one, uh, it's gonna be a short recap. Like I said, blah, blah, blah. All right, so it was clear from the start, the difference between the Japanese and Korean idols it was also cool to see the different agencies and their members coming out uh, they were saying how produce 48 had other big name agencies that didn't put in their members and the other producers i think banana uh exid's agency did that and then some others i i can't remember like i said it was halfway through but yeah it was pretty interesting i i always love seeing the entrance right and how the other trainees like hype each other up. It's like, oh my god, they're from that agency. It's, I, I love this aspect of it. It's just, oh, can't get enough of it. I feed off of this stuff. Let's see. It was cool seeing the former YG girl. You know, that was really hype. Her getting on the first chair. You know, the way she walked up, blonde hair and all, really stood out from the crowd. Um, Ooh, and then because of their editing style, you get to see the two Japanese aces, Sakura and I think her name is pronounced Jarina. Their backstory is pretty interesting. Jarina, I think, was voted number one for the most influential member in AKB48. Granted, you know, forgive me if I'm not getting the award right or anything. And then Sakura, I think, got, I think, third place, if I'm not mistaken. So I was definitely looking forward to their performances, you know, the super hype and 
I'm pretty sure Jarena was probably one of my first AKB48 member crushes. She looks so different from before, but I guess it's like 10 years, right? If I remember correctly, since I last saw her first music video with AKB48. But <clears throat> I think she acted like a really uh, mean girl in that video. I'm not too sure. Moving on. I don't want to go on a tangent here, but let's see. Yeah, I was definitely looking forward to the performances. Jarena definitely slayed, and she proved that, you know, Japanese idols had that fighting spirit within them and you know she got that beat prior to that oh my it was like i said before a clear difference korean idols had that training that dancing skill vocal skill and most of the korean idols had you know the a's and the b's you know somewhat c's but i don't know if it was surprising but kind of surprising to see like these idols in the Japanese category, Japanese group, getting these F's and D's being graded by Korean standard, right? Because you see in the episode that they were talking about how Korean and Japanese idols, or how they produce their idols, have different standards in approaching. Korean are really meticulous, you know, with their choreography, dancing, singing, but with Japan, it's really. It's all about that charisma, you know, about having fun, that energy, positive vibes. And it's really cool to see these two mesh together. And I think they can, you know, rub off on each other really well and, you know, just improve the whole idol industry for ages to come. Learning from each other, you know. There was a really funny Japanese AKB48 member they have that one C. I'm pretty sure if you've seen the first episode, you know who I'm talking about. She's really funny. She makes everything laugh. And she has that really husky voice because she like had a cold and she never healed from it because she <laughs> went off in the snow wearing like nothing, I think. That's what she said. The one that reminded them of Jui, that super energy. All the Korean idols slayed. I'll just throw that. Some of them did stand out to me. Forgive me for not remembering them. The only one that I do really remember, I think is from Cletus. The really tall girl, the one that got an A. Uh, oh, the one that I think debuted with after school? I think it was after school. Oh, but yeah. And the mentors. Yeah, I really love the mentors. So you, I've always been a big fan of Sistar, so it was nice seeing her. And I was so surprised to see Meiji Lee if you don't know who Meiji Lee is, she's the one of the dancers for oh, the Korean dance group on YouTube, and she does. Uh, she was in All I oh, All I Want to Do with Jay Park. I think that's the name. She had that like solo dance with him. Oh, she looks so gorgeous in it. But yeah, that was pretty much episode one in a nutshell.